Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug, and Justin is off fulfilling his second most important dream, which is following in the footsteps of our founding father, George Washington, and masturbating in any place that he ever went on the Eastern Coast. So while he's off doing that, I brought in a very special person, a return guest, an all-star, a champion, a know-it-all in a good way. Please welcome back Jill. Hi. There we go. Let's just, you know. Well, let's yeah. hey, let's welcome back Jill. Hey, oh, hey, hey. <laughs> you did it! You did you did the shoulder touch one. Hey, <laughs> hey. well done. Thank uh, you. And Jill, what was your first impression of me? Oh boy, um, my first impression of you was you were very happy to be there. And so, for the context of people, I met Doug the first weekend of college. We were assigned peer groups. So we had like a welcome meeting in a, in a location. They gave us, we had peer groups assigned and we went to go find them in a gymnasium. And I believe I was the second person to walk up to the group and you were the third person to walk up to the group. And you were wearing a band t-shirt. Pretty certain it was a Blink-182 t-shirt. You are correct. It was. <laughs> And like cargo shorts and you had to book bag on and you had your arms, like your hands on the straps. And you were just like, I am so happy to be here for my first day. So my first impression was this guy is glad to be here. And I was like, same Z's. So You're like this yeah. guy fucks. And, that's cool, <laughs> you know? and like most people, I think I did assume that you probably played football or a sport because you know, you're a big dude. It was like, I'm a big guy. Who the hell's this guy over here? You know, what's this fucking guy <laughs> doing over here? Uh, my first impression of you, I really, I think I got to know you most while working at the library because uh, yeah. we worked at the library together and uh, you were feisty. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I learned real quick that Jill takes no prisoners, takes no shit. Uh, I used to tell you early on, I was like, let's holster those guns, you know? <laughs> We're not going to war. Let's 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 put them in our holsters because you're just like Bow! quick draw when it came to anything, which we later understood. It comes from trauma and everything like that, and it's fine. We're working through it. It's all it's good. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's uh, fine. But yeah, I, you were very uh, like there was like Jill takes no shit from anybody. Was kind of like my thing, but in a good way. It wasn't like oh Jill's like lashing out. It was just like if you if you are dumb to Jill. Jill will not only let you know, she'll let you have it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I like to think I give people what they give me. So if you give I me agree. bullshit, you're going to get some bullshit back. So I think where, where you've grown, <laughs> if I may. Sure. Where you've grown is you've, you've now taken several beats to consider what's this person's intention? <laughs> is this person trying to be a dick? Or yeah. was it just a misunderstanding? Whereas when I first met you, it was like, shh, unsheathing the katana, <laughs> lighting it on fire. And you're like, what'd you say? What'd you say? Because I'm going to burn your house down, you know, like, <laughs> and uh, you've come, you've come a long way since then. So congratulations. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, you welcome. are as well. I, when you said first impression, I thought of literally the moment you entered my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, but definitely my, my first impression of you beyond that, like getting to know you, like beyond that first moment was this guy's pumped to be here. This guy wants to be friends with everybody. He's, he's down for whatever, basically <laughs> like, but to have fun, you weren't, I, I knew quickly you weren't out to like party and get drunk and whatever, but you're like, I'll go to the party. I will rally the troops for all of us to go together. Doug was very much like. Mr. Inclusive, let's be friends with everybody, um, goofy, silly, still that guy for sure. Um, but you you have grown a lot too in the 20 plus years we've known each other. So we're both better people. I credit you for I most think. of it. You can yeah. check the timestamps and all the other episodes where I give you credit. It's true. It's factual. Thanks. 
I give you credit yeah. for helping me holster the guns. So yeah, you know. we work together. We've been a good, we've been a good <laughs> partnership. For those of you who don't know, we're married. If this yeah. is your first time here, so uh, yeah, she's you know talking to me all the way from downstairs. Um, <laughs> This time I figured I'd try it out where we could be, you know, in separate rooms so I could like play audio stuff for her and also, you know, just get a, a good full picture of Jill as opposed to like, you know, <laughs> one whatever, how I did it yeah. last time, which was fine. You yeah. Know, so this is this is good. And we're we're glad you're here. So, well, Thanks. cool. I'm glad my first impression. I definitely remember meeting you for the first time, but I didn't get to know you super quickly. Um, yeah. Until, most like, you of know, that- obviously. Most of my impression of you is based on my observation of you, which I rely yeah. upon a lot. As you know, that's where the guns come out. Yeah. You know, I know I have six cents of people. So most yeah. of that impression is like just taking you in is like, yeah, here's this guy and he's very excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. I, and mostly it's because I, I think part of it was because I, I literally was going to a school almost four hours away before I grew up and I didn't know anybody. I was like, I can't wait to meet a whole bunch of new people Everyone. because <laughs> I didn't like most of the people that I came from were from yeah. where I came from. So I was like, time to start over. So I was like at 18, I was like fresh start. Let's fucking do this. And yeah. uh, I was all, I was gung ho. I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's I could feel that let's you were putting that energy out in the world for sure. I was like I'm glad to be here. I'm going to commit to this whole entire thing. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for the show today um, because we got a lot of good stuff. It's going to be really, really fun. Uh, So as a quick reminder for folks, um, if you're listening to us only, thank you for listening. Appreciate you. But you can also watch us on YouTube at youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. We have uh, our playlist there of our shorts, clips from the show. We've got uh, video game live streams that happen there as well, typically on Fridays, possibly Saturday this week because of scheduling uh, basically i host a video game live stream where sometimes i'm playing with other people sometimes it's just myself sometimes someone in the community goes rogue and takes over the stream so it's, it's a good time so come hang out it's always a good community event follow us on all our social medias at mind gap podcast and uh yeah if you like what we were doing here hit the like button and leave us a comment let youtube know that you know hey these guys they're all right over here over here <laughs> saying it too much already not that far into this and i'm really leaning on over here <laughs> so yeah all that good stuff uh okay but before we go any further it is time to do an ad <laughs> all right <laughs> here we go are you three boys in a trench coat but everyone thinks you're an adult man well worry no further chaps with our new patented boy separator you can take off that trench coat and get to work you'll be three individual boys in no time not wanting to sever your eternal bond? We have a solution for that as well. Introducing our new transparent trench coat. With our tra- patented transparent trench coat, you and your buddies can stay stacked without having dimwits in society be fooled about your appearance. Learn more at Boy Separator and ClearTrenchCoat.com. <laughs> Logging on now. <laughs> Logging now. Uh, so. I have recently decided, I mentioned this a little bit with Justin last week, but on on Max, they have a whole section of movies that are just like a whole area dedicated just to the A24 films. If you're not familiar with A24 films, they're typically indie films um, that have very unique stories. Uh, if you've ever seen movies like Ex Machina, Hereditary, Midsummer, Moonlight, all of those are A24 films, and there's a whole slew of them. And I was like, you know what? I've been watching a lot of mainstream stuff. Maybe I should commit to checking out some indie films because I love A20. Whenever there's an A24 like trailer or something, I'm always like, show me what you got. I'm curious. <laughs> so at this point, I've watched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven A24 films. I started with mid-90s, which was my recommendation from last week. After that one, I went on a five-movie streak where I realized there was one connecting thing in all of those. And that was The Dog Dies. (laughs) And as I was watching the movies, I was like, okay, uh uh-huh, okay, uh uh-huh. And I got to the point where I was like, god damn, man, this this is a streak I didn't want. I didn't want... To see the dog die. Now, to be fair, like these aren't necessarily like brutal 
couple of them are, but more of because of you just the circumstances of how you see that they are dead. You're like, oh, that fucking sucks. That's not cool. Um, but then I was like, I'll watch a sci-fi one. No <laughs> chance. A dog can die in this one. It's in fucking space. Spoiler alert, <laughs> gang. There's flashbacks. And they find a whole other spaceship full of dogs. And guess what? Mm. Fucking dead dogs in that thing, too. So I was like, wow, this one is lousy with dead dogs. And I thought this one would be the least susceptible because it's in space. And I was like, I was just like talking to Jill. I was like, hey, you should check out this movie. It's it's called, you know, Skin. And she's like, oh, yeah, I go. There's a dog in it. She's like, "Did it? does it die? And I'm like, I don't know yet. I'm not all the way through it, but I'll keep you posted. I finished the movie. I go, dog did die, but it wasn't a huge deal. Like, it's impactful, but as a viewer, you weren't like, oh, my God, this thing is getting, you know, strangled to death or something like that. It's not, it's not, it happens off screen and everything like that. But you're like, oh, man, the dog's dead. So Jill let me know, like, hey. <laughs> Listen, people can burn up, die, get you know swallowed by jaws or any other like demons or whatever. But if the dog or the animals die, you got to let me know. I need to Jill, know this. Tell yeah. us more about it. <laughs> I feel bad that that's how I feel about it because you, you know, shouldn't. Well, you know, humans. Humans are in- inherently <laughs> sinful creatures, born yeah. of sin as <laughs> God's plan. Anyway, you continue. Yeah. No, I mean. You're you're not wrong. Um, no, it it bums me out when the dog dies. I'm 40 years old, and I still have to tell myself like you would tell a child. It's okay. It, it's just a movie. The dog's not real. <laughs> the dog. There's no dog that really died in this movie. <laughs> like yeah. I have to know that. And that would be um, I don't know if I were you, I would keep going with the A24 movies, and that's a hell of a streak. I'd be super Good bummed news. out. <laughs> Broke the streak. Well, so that's the relief. What on number the six? The first and one didn't seven. have it. The first one didn't have it. And the last two that I've watched haven't had. And the one that I'm watching now, very unlikely that it's going to have a dog die in it. So right. I just <laughs> happened to pick five in a row. Just I picked poorly or I picked great, depending on your perspective. I don't oh know. Oh my God. What are the odds? Five in a row. That severely bums me out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. In case you're wondering, I'll give you all the the, the the ones that have the dog dying in them. Just not saying you shouldn't watch it, but just just an FYI. Uh, High Life is one of them. That's the sci-fi one. Don't be fooled. Just because it's in space doesn't mean the dog doesn't die. Uh, skin. Uh, it comes at night. The Witch and the Lobster. Of all of those, the Lobster probably was the most upsetting one to me. Followed closely behind as it comes at night. Okay. Other than that, the other ones are like, eh, you know, not too bad. Yeah. I was just going to ask you that question. Like what? Because you said some of them weren't really brutal and some of them were, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I appreciate that. There's a definite definite difference to me in what I can handle if it's like, you know, the person comes home and all of a sudden their dog's missing and you can infer or whatever, but <laughs> you have to see it or hear it. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. I can't handle it in books. You know, I read a lot. Yeah. And I don't have to see it or hear it. And I'm still bummed out. I have to close the book for a minute and, like, regroup. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah, I agree. It's not a real dog. It's a fictional dog. It's okay. (laughs) Yeah. It's tough because, um, obviously, you know, dogs, cats, these other creatures, they're just innocent beings. They're just existing. So when you when they're subjected to any sort of pain or torment, you just I, I personally I'm like, that sucks, man. Like this thing didn't deserve that. You know, yeah. if it's like, oh, no, it got eaten by a wolf. I'm like, that's kind of nature. It still sucks. But, you know, like whatever. But if there's like intentional malice behind yeah. it and you're like, oh, man, that's fucked. That's fucked up, man. Like, why right. are you doing that? This dog's it's just a dog, you know, yeah. like. If you're defending yourself against a wild dog or whatever, okay, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. But if it's like, hey, that's this guy's dog. Let's fucking kill it. Like, that's that sucks, man. Like, yeah. that's not cool. Because you're doing it with the intent to psychologically damage the other person or hurt them in a way that you can't get to them. And that, that sucks. Like, that's yeah. that's really upsetting. So I, I'm with you where I'm like, please don't. But when you step into the independent film world, anything goes. Like, yeah. Yeah, You're dogs like, are going to die and then it's just going to fade to black. So you get angry stakes twice. Stakes are high. You know? Yeah, it's going <laughs> to, yeah. that's the thing. Cause you're also like, you may not get the closure you want. I've <laughs> had, I've watched several of these movies so far and I've gotten done. I'm like, I don't know if I like that. 
I need to go read a recap of this. I need someone to explain this to me to see if I like it. I just finished one, one uh, a ghost story. And I watched that movie. And what I want to do is I want, there's one particular. <sighs> Here's the thing. I appreciate when I when I got the explainer for it, I'm like, that's actually a way more beautiful film. Maybe I was just too fucking stupid to, to understand it. But when I when I listen to the explainer, I'm like, OK, all right. I like it more now. But there's one scene that if, if you're not super into independent films, I'm not saying you, Jill, but just you out there to my to my friends, all my friends. If you're not too familiar with with independent films, sometimes they're categorized by really long scenes where nothing fucking happens. Um, and there was one scene in this, in this movie that I'm like, I need to cut, I need to find this scene somewhere. I need to show it to Justin. I want to, I want to preload with like, Justin, this is one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen. And I need you to watch this. I need you to tell me what you think about it. Um, and uh, it is, I kid you not, it, it felt like forever, but it was probably three minutes of a woman eating pie. And that was it. Just eating pie. And it was one shot, just one angle. She's eating pie. See? I'm sitting there and I was like, I started, I was watching and I'm like, I hear like the clink of the fork going into the casserole dish. And then she's doing it. And I like start like, I can't take it anymore. I start skipping ahead. I'm like 10 seconds, still eating pie, 10 seconds, still eating pie, 10 seconds, still eating pie, 10 seconds, still eating pie. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, That's this absurd. is a waste of film. That's yeah. absurd. I mean, start getting me angry. Well, and you said, you know, this is the same movie you went to go look up, like what the movie was meant to capture or like do. Like, this is the thing about independent films for me, or even books can be like this too, where it's just like you kind of feel stupid. Like, did I not get it? And then you read about Mm -hmm. it, you're like, oh, okay. But a scene like that, that's not to me like clever or, or whatever. It's pretentious. It doesn't mm-hmm. need to be three minutes of this woman just sitting there and eating pie. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like sometimes people are just like think too highly of themselves <laughs> in terms of what their ideas articulate, whatever it is they think they're going to do. But three mm-hmm. whole minutes of just watching this person eat pie, I, I'm sure without yeah. having seen it is unnecessary. <laughs> Very like, frustrating. And yeah. for the record, like the film does get better, like as yeah. it goes on, like that's a, that's in the front. And I'm just like, <sighs> I was just there being like, I get it. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Personally, again, like, listen, I, I've never made a movie before. This person did. Right. And mm-hmm. congratulations to them. They made something. And, you know, I, I think it is a beautiful film. It's not, not something I'm going to rewatch anytime soon. But um, I was just like, I don't know. I personally would do it a different way. I was like, I could find there's a way to in, interpret this without just gotten it. Because that's the thing I kept thinking. I'm like, fuck, she had to eat this pie. Like, this actor <laughs> had to eat this pie. Like, I know there's like tips and tricks on like how you do that. I'm like, like, how many times did they do this? Like, hopefully this was like a one and done. Like, hey, look really upset while you eat this pie or we're going to do it again. Like, (laughs) I don't want to eat any more pie. (laughs) It's like, I'm I'm like, it's like, you know, that it's like, yeah, you're, you're, by the way, your nutritionist is really pissed right now. So, you know, (laughs) we're going to have to do it again. Um, So, um, yeah. Anyway, like. In general, it's been it's been an enjoyable experience kind of going through this stuff and, and trying different things out. So, um, you know, I'd say if you were like me and you're a big mainstream kind of movie guy, you're used to those sort of beats. Uh, I'd say challenge yourself and, and, and check out if you have Max, check out their A24 collection on there. They got a lot of interesting stuff. Um, check it out and let me know, like it, from that category, what is one of your favorite films from there? What do you what do you like? What's your jam? Why do you like it? Which was one you didn't like so much? Which one didn't meet expectations? And what are there any ones that you're looking forward to? Let us know down in those comments. We'd love to know more. All right. Um, Jill, but well, actually, before we move on for that, is there any independent film that you can think of that really like tickles them nips? Like, I, or- <clears throat> I don't know. I can't. I have so many books in my head. I don't know if I can mm-hmm. keep any. You would probably remember an independent movie that I liked better than I would. Doug, what yeah. independent movies do I like? I know uh, ones I, the kind of ones I don't like. Like what's one of those ones you don't like? Well, I can't. I, I mean, I, can't, I don't know if I can think of a, the name of a movie, but I don't like the ones where like, well, you kind of said like how nothing happens for a long period of time. I don't like books like mm-hmm. that either. And I keep talking yeah. about books. Cause if you guys don't know, I'm a big book nerd and I read a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Um, 
where you just where there's I need character arc. I need something like that. I need to see some evolution of a character. And it doesn't have to be like fully resolved and fully, you know, tightened up with a bow, but You know, I like stories of people overcoming, stories of resilience, things like that. And an independent movie can sometimes just be about a very small period of time where maybe something traumatic happens and maybe you don't see where they end up, but you can see them on the path of getting better. Like, that's okay with me. I can handle that. Mm -hmm. But where it just sort of like ends, it's like, so (laughs) what was the point of this? Like, we just sort of... um, And I guess some people might like that where you just sort of get a peek into a story for a period of time and it's not about progression or anything. It's just like peeking in on this little world and and piecing out. I suppose I can appreciate that that might be enjoyable for some people, but that's not enjoyable for me. So indie films, you you and I have watched enough of them together where at the end I'm like, son of a, because they're just like that, you know, that's the end. You're like, but there's... It's no oh. end. It didn't end. I know. You just stopped. I know one you liked, and I know one you hated. <laughs> All right, lay them out, because I don't remember. The one, the one you hated was Enemy, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we had to I, look that was, into I, that one. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that recently pop up on one of the streaming services. I'm like, do I watch this again? Do I? Because I'm like, yeah. I don't know, man. That was a weird one. There's like a lot of uh, spider theme in it not like spider-man but like you know webs you actually yeah. see giant spiders and stuff like throughout it and there's the and apparently the actors were told they signed an nda so they would never explain what the spiders meant in the film it's very it ends with a huh yeah we had, a, <laughs> we had I to look like, into what? that one like what was that supposed to be about because i looked into it. it when i looked into it it was a classic like okay now that i understand that and i understand because these movies just make me feel dumb because i can't figure <laughs> them out so when I read the explainer, I'm like, I like that better. You know, um, that was one you didn't like. One of the ones you loved was The Rock starring Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. Stop it. The character arc in that Stop one. It. If I'm, I when I, speaking of first impressions, one of your favorite movies when I met you. Stop it. I have, never loved, I have never loved a movie Nicolas Cage is in ever. I don't think that is fucking false.com. That is not true. It's that not, is not true. It's not true. Look, see. Just say no yeah, anyone. Case. Anyone can put anything on a mug, Jill. Ask me. I, I can know. put anything you on a mug. <laughs> yeah, because I fucking love you. He sucks. I'm sorry, but he sucks. Disagree. I will anyway. say guilty pleasure at one point point in time in my life. I don't know if I'd watch it now. Con Air. That's Con like Air. that's yeah, like maybe. a good bad movie. You that's know? right. Yeah. Nicholas Cage, long hair, southern accent, super creepy. Tank top, Ugh. tank top with tight jeans. <laughs> Maybe wearing boots. I don't know. I think but like, he is. You know. In my head, they're like big yeah. boots. They're just like stupid yeah. big boots. Yeah. Yeah. Because his, his fists are weapons. That's yeah. why he went. Because he's protecting his pregnant wife yeah. from some bullies at the bar. And he's like, you are sentenced to life in prison because you are a deadly weapon. Which is every 90s guy's fucking fantasy. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, man, these... These are considered deadly Good weapons, so if I up. punch you and kill you, they're going to lock me up, so you better fucking watch out. Like, nothing more 90s than that. Yeah, Jesus pretty much. Christ. Explosions. Yeah. The explosions in that movie are just, like, ridiculous. Yeah, we're going to land this plane on the, sh- on, the, on the, I almost said New York Strip, the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to land it on a big piece of meat, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. yeah, baby. Yeah, I was just thinking of Nicolas Cage and meat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm, tender. He's a, he's a big old meat steak. Big Yum. Old meat steak. Yeah. All right. Now let's get let's get to the main event here. This is what I've been so excited for. This is what we brought Jill on for. Because actually this was Jill's idea. She it's this thing that was been it's been around for years or whatever, but it's essentially start a fight in five words or less. So But no politics. What, no politics. Yeah. That'd be too easy. That's too easy. Yeah. Um, So Jill's come up with some things. I've come up with some things. And we're going to lay this down right now. So open up your ear holes, folks. Uh, These are things we're saying to start a fight. We don't necessarily believe these things. Okay? Well, I'm going to say that again. We don't necessarily believe these things. These are just things you can use to start a fucking fight. All right? (laughs) And some of it may just be be things that I know that I will start a fight with Jill specifically. (laughs) 
or it will be a wider audience saying something that I know would piss people off. And then, you know, that's how you'd start a fight. So yeah. keep your ears whole opens and don't think this is what we believe. These are just things I know would start a fight. Yeah. So Jill, you're the guest here. Um, <clears throat> I'd like you to, to start off with one of yours. Go ahead and hit me with it. Well, and I wrote a couple of these just for you. So they're not necessarily like I'm making pro- proclaimed statements about what I believe. These are just things mm-hmm. I think I These could say. These you know would, would fucking yeah. start a fight with me. Yeah. yeah. Number one. Number one. Let's go. I adopted a second dog. Oh, God. <laughs> We've been through this. You all don't know this. Like They've been literally barking up this tree for a while now. Both her and Natalie are like, we ought to get a second dog. And listen, in my heart... <laughs> I want to do that. But practical Doug's like, this ain't going to work. I can't do it. We just can't do it because it means double, like double costs in general. It would be great for Loki. It'd be yeah. great for us. We'd love to have a second dog. I want that a means snuggly like, dog the next time around. I love Loki, but I okay. want one to snuggle with me. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck finding that exact dog. That means two dogs have to get walked. Do we walk them at the same time? Do we walk them separately? Who fucking knows? Uh, if we have to go somewhere, uh, we got to board two dogs. We got to mm-hmm. take two dogs to the vet. We got to get more food. Uh, we may have to have two crates. Uh, we got to clean up twice the amount of poop. Um, you know, this just the list goes on and on and on. I'm just like, I just right now, I just can't. You do really it. know how to suck it. the fun out of everything. <laughs> hey, what do you want from me? Listen, I'm telling you the facts here. All right, I'm I telling know. you the and facts. Here's the thing: is that I. I, I know that if I can appeal to practical Doug, that's a good way to win an argument. There is no. I always tell that to people. There's not a practical reason for a second dog. It's just a want. Mm-hmm. It's not a need. There's no way I can make it make sense. I just want it. And so does Natalie. And you're depriving your wife and your daughter of joy. That's all I'm saying. See, guilt doesn't work on practical <laughs> Doug. Mm-mm. There's that. That's a shield. That's a shield. That's up right there. That ain't, that ain't happening. I'm not trying you know. to guilt you. I'm just being snarky for fun. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, ain't gonna work on practical Doug. So that's, that he's strong. He's very- strong against. He's he has resistance against psychic attacks. He does. He does. Yeah. Uh, when I was thinking about these, I'm like, that was the first one that comes to mind. Like, if like, I just if I just went and adopted a dog without you, like first and foremost, even if we didn't have a dog, if we agreed to get one. For the first mm-hmm. time, and I did it without you, that would be no, that would just not be cool. That would be really bad. We wouldn't be do really that bad for our relationship. <laughs> yes. No, that'd be really, really bad. Yeah. All right. I've got one for you. All right. You ready? All We're right. going to trade back and forth. All right. Here we go. America's football team, Dallas Cowboys. You son of a bitch. <laughs> As soon as I heard America's football, I knew what you were going to say. I didn't know how to do it. I was like, do I start with Dallas Cowboys, colon, oh. America's football team? <laughs> Because Dallas Cowboys just, that's two words where you're like, fuck. But I was like, let's add uh, America's football team on yeah. that because they're self proclaimed as America's football team. Yeah. And that's a moniker they needed to get rid of about 30 years ago. They may have been America's yeah. team in the 90s when they were good, but they haven't been good since then. So they need to stop it because um, they aren't America's team. So yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> yeah. We don't really follow football like we did for, like, I don't know. I don't know what you, at most maybe six years yeah. maybe tops yeah. maybe we kind of followed it for a while and even during that t- time we're like ah we don't like the Cowboys there's just something about them it's Here's the thing. you know Darth Vader runs that organization <laughs> and you know it's just Jerry Jones he's just such a such a cocksucker he's and a there's just something about them they I don't know there's something about them I just do not like it's I just, think I part of what I them. don't like is that they still think they're America's team which is less like mm-hmm. you need to do better if you want anybody to be you know, you want to be the favorite among everyone. I know plenty yeah. of, you know, misled people that are fans of them. But, um, you know, and if you've been a diehard fan your whole life or whatever, teach their own. But they are not America's team. Um, yeah, that's that's the, I think that's a key point for me is like someone's like, yeah. we're America's football team. I'm like, oh, yeah. Was there a vote? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a vote was in this, that election. <laughs> was this decided in the electoral college? Huh? Did the super delegates get involved? Yeah. Huh? Was was what wh- wh- where where does this come from? Yeah, you just you know what? I guess you know uh, lose pizza can just be like yeah we're the best pizza in the fucking we're world the best over, here. over here. Hey, we're <laughs> the best pizza in the world. It's like okay, I guess you can say that, but there's like objectively, can you can you say that? I mean, I don't know. I'm sure bigger sports nerds have you know fought this out you know over us, but I'm like listen, I don't. Uh, were you a dynasty for a bit? Absolutely. But I mean, when I think of recent history, I'm like the Patriots, the Chiefs, 
you know, like it's like the 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 bull, I'm like the Bills, the Bulls, the Bears thing. Like, <laughs> hey, we're America's football team. Like, you won one, guys. You won one in '85. All right, we're happy for you. God bless you. But you're not America's team, okay? Right. They're not, and they haven't been for a long time and never let go of that moniker. Um, Mm -hmm. And I will say, I am not a diehard fan of any team, but I I am a diehard hater of the Cowboys. There you go. (laughs) Your Honor, we rest our case. Rest our case. All right. All right, Jill, what's your next one? Jason Bourne didn't die. Oh, that's so funny because I have one in here that says Jason Bourne dies. Isn't that funny? I knew that was going to happen. We were going to cross streams. Of course. So let's let's get this one out. Let's get this one out of the way. So Jill and I were, I guess, still are big fans of the Bourne uh, trilogy. Anything yeah. after or before that doesn't, doesn't count. count. <laughs> we're not talking yeah. about that. Bourne Identity, Bourne Supremacy, Bourne Ultimatum. Those mm-hmm. are the only ones that matter. Right. Um, and at the end, spoiler alert, uh, Bourne <laughs> Ultimatum. Uh, Born comes back to New York. He goes into uh, this place, this facility where he he is his his place of origin. And in doing so, he is surrounded by a bunch of government agents. He runs to the top of the building and in a brilliant attempt to escape, he is shot. He falls into some body of water. Maybe it's a river. Who fucking knows? It's It's the East River, right? It's in New York. I don't know. I don't know what rivers. Is it the Hudson River? Is that New York? I thought they said East River. I feel like for as much as I don't remember of movies, I feel like I remember that part where they do the headline in the movie. I believe it. He falls in the East River. And at that point, I say he died. Sure. You see him swim away. Sure. You see him swim away. He swims away at the end of the movie. But I'm like, no, that's his that's his ghost going to heaven. (laughs) You know, with his dog, with as he swims the the river, <laughs> he swims the river sticks across with the the ferryman and meets in Valhalla with all the other warriors. No. I know I'm mixing <laughs> mythologies here, but that's cool. I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and Jill is like, no, he swims away because he's a badass. Yeah. I'm like, he should have died because he made the choice to go and find out where he came from, and in doing so, endangered himself, knowingly endangered himself. So in my mind, I'm like, he paid, he learned, but he paid the price of dying. In the Number process. one, we're not talking about what should have happened. Okay. Agree. Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> we're talking this about sounds what? like I'm talking to Justin right now. <laughs> Justin's like, hey, then you fucking make that movie, Doug. I hear it. I hear it. That's a valid point. No one asked what should have happened. We're saying mm-hmm. he didn't die. You think he did or he should have. I didn't ask about should have. He did not die. Mm-hmm. And yeah. number two, if we're talking about if he should have died, he should have died a long time ago before he got to no. this point. Mm-mm, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> Your logic is flawed, sir. <laughs> no, no, because he had control over all those situations. He made tactically sound like decisions to put himself in advantage or basically he relied on his skills to whatever. He knowingly went into an area that was a terrible idea. It was essentially suicide for him to go into this building, but he needed to know. Mm-hmm. Hell, Pamela Landy's like, get out of here. And he's like, no, you bring him down. You fax this over to the people and you fucking take him down. He's like, I got to go find out. Like that was a, any like sound person, everything he was trained would have told him, don't fucking do that. That's a terrible idea. I agree he essentially killed himself by going in there. I you know agree I mean? with you. He, he, his training would have told him this is a bad idea. And I will say he mm-hmm. went in there not caring whether or not he died. He wanted answers. But exactly. dude got out. He got out of the building. He jumped off the building into the river. And he swam away and he lived happily ever after. He got shot he got, and fell, in, and did, fell into the river. Did we see it hit his skin? Do we, we see get, the bullet wound? It's, it, it's heavily implied it's that he implied, got shot. implied, but we don't see heavily it. Heavily implied. We don't see it. All right. Yeah, we don't see it. You know, because this ain't some art film that's going to show you every little thing. You have to fucking figure She's it out. He's also you know? recovered from being shot before. So. I'm not worried about that, but has he been shot and then fallen? I don't know how many fucking stories into She's the goddamn learned. river. He's learned how to jump off of buildings into water, probably. Yeah, yeah he was trained. He's like, I'm going to shoot you and I'm going to jump in the part of his training? He's got this. Yeah, that's different, that's different than getting shot and falling several stories into, into a fucking river. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> agree to disagree. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. I've got a lot on here for you that I might just save some of those for like a speed round. But I want to I want to get I want to get to a good one. Buy your books on Amazon. Oh, sir. 
Woo! That just made my heart rate go up. That's it was founded on buying books, Jill. You should buy your books on Amazon. That was its core principle. Maybe when it started, but Amazon takes the position of a loss leader on books. They take a loss on them so that they will get you to come to their site to buy other shit that makes up for the fact that they're losing out on books, on the prices of books, which indie bookstores don't do because they're in the business of books. They're not in the business of you want a book, you want some socks, you want some rubber bands, like whatever. They lose money on every book they sell on Amazon. So when you buy your books there, you're a jerk. Cool. The end. All right. <laughs> All right. I got another one I just thought of for you. <laughs> okay. Audiobooks don't count. I put that as one of mine too. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. You do it then. You do it. I just, that just popped in my head right now. You do it then. That's yours. Uh, that you do just it. tells me you listen, Doug. You're such a I good do. boy. Not to audiobooks because they don't fucking count. <laughs> no, you'd rather listen to podcasts than audiobooks, but whatever. It's fine. It's the same thing. At least you, you listen to the shit I say. So, you know, points yeah. for that. I did put that yeah. down. The audiobooks don't count as reading. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm on the Bookstagram, for those of you that don't know, at Book It Bean. Um, and people talk about this sometimes that, you know, that audiobooks don't count as reading. I will say I like physical books better. I like having them in my house. They're all around me right now. Um, I like, I just like holding a book and reading a book. I've gotten better at reading audiobooks. I do enjoy them. It's just not how I consume most of that content. Um, but it absolutely counts because you're still listening to a story. I mean, you are paying attention to that just because you're using a different sense, <laughs> you know, ears versus eyes doesn't mean it's not reading. Um, and also it's um, not very kind because it also is more accessible to some people who are hard of hearing or, mm. or deaf. Um, you know, they might use Braille. Does that not count? Like, you know, audiobooks would be accessible to someone who is not able to read a physical book for whatever reason. So, but. yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. I can understand some people like, oh, it's lazy. You're going to have someone read to you. You're going to count as reading a book. I'm like, I mean, yeah, it counts, right? You're yeah. spending the time yeah. to consume it. So, you are. does watching the book count when you watch the movie? <laughs> no. Huh? <laughs> no, because it's not, not, cause the, it's not same story, the same story, usually. <laughs> not the same. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. So, fair enough. So, anyway, well, I'm glad you had that one. That yeah. was good. Uh, uh, in lieu of what just has happened recently, um, I want to say, uh, what about International Men's Day? <laughs> I feel like that's last political. Friday. I feel like that's La political. Is it? Yes. Is it? Uh, last Friday was International Women's Day, and there was no shortfall of dickheads being like, what about International Men's Day? And it's like, uh, you mean every day? Yeah. Every day of the year? Right. The same people asking that question are wondering why there's not a white entertainment network on TV you know, or we'll just lump this in. What? No white history month. You know, yeah, like same people, you know, it's like asking that question. Like, um, just take a look around. Yeah. Um, right. It's kind of everywhere. Look yeah. at the, uh, award shows. Look at, uh, pfft, look just about anything. You got, uh, you got white history yeah. everywhere around you. Right. So. We need this month to get your dumb ass to focus outside of yourself at, to what other people are doing. So yeah. yeah. So all those people I'd say, <laughs> all right, chill your tits. You know, uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so those, those are some ones that will get people all riled up because it's stupid and things yeah. that I've said, or not that I've said, <laughs> that I've seen, but I'm just like, I'm like, really? We're going to, we're going to get this up. You are now upset because you're like, well, this guy's got something. Why do I get anything? It's like, fucking relax. You're right. fine. You're yeah. Okay. You have so much representation all the time. You don't even realize it so much. Yeah. So that someone's like, we want a month dedicated to someone that's not white. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> what? You're like, you get 11. You yeah. get 11 of the 12. Yeah. You still get the majority of them. You're cool. You're fine. fine. All right. Fucking relax. You know, <laughs> you don't give a shit. You don't care. It's fine. Relax. Yeah. You know, all right. You got another one. Uh, yes. Let's see. Oh, this is another one for Doug. And I, I'm going to use a little leeway here. There's a first and last name, and I'm just counting it as one. It's a proper noun. That's what I'm going with. Okay. Christopher Nolan is a terrible director. Mm. This is great because he just won your... Best Director in the Oscars last night. Yeah, I was like, I was like, <laughs> fucking, fucking prove it. Well, this again, this fucking is, this prove is it. not something I believe. This is just something oh, to start a fight with you. Hey, you did it. I'm just like, okay, all right. I could barely say it out loud. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell me more. I'd love to hear why. I'd love to hear why. Listen, I was no Tenet notes. a good I movie? <laughs> no, I didn't like Tenet. Looking, they can all be fucking gems. All right, but Dark Knight trilogy, awesome. Insomnia, awesome. Uh, fucking Memento, fantastic. Uh, Dunkirk, eh. Yeah. Interstellar, eh. Love the idea. Fucking Inception, get the fuck out of here. That movie is awesome. <laughs> Oppenheimer, goddamn amazing. His totally worthy of the script, Oscar. Right, like his screenwriting with these movies is just unbelievable. So it was hard yeah. for me to even say that out loud. But even funnier, I said it after he won the Oscar last night. So, yeah, Oops. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you just put your head between your legs and eat your own butt on that one. No, thank but, you. <laughs> yeah, no, do it. Do it. No, I'm do, right. prove it. I don't know what that means. Um, okay, here's one um, just for you. And I don't believe this. I need to state this very clear again. I don't believe this. You're just like your mom. (laughs) Damn, you came to play today. (laughs) Hey, we're starting fights in five words or less. Here we go. Bada bing. I didn't know I could get more upset than the Amazon comment for books. I didn't know there would be such low blows. Those three I've said for you, or that's all I have. <laughs> I knew the assignment. I don't know. Yeah, um, you did good, man. Yeah. We don't have to get into why that's bad, uh, but I'll follow it up with uh, you. You reap what you sow, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically repeating what you just said. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Jill's mom used to say, "You reap what you sow," like ad nauseum oh when she was God. growing up. So when she hears that, she has a physical reaction. She yeah. goes, g-g-g-g-g-g. like she can't handle it. <laughs> so it's it's oh one of those things God. where I'm like, g-b-g-g-g. yeah. Um, Whew. I've got two more. Okay. One again. Don't I don't believe either of these, but I'm going to say them. This is more broad now. We're taking the target off of Jill by herself. Phew. One one is millennials are lazy and entitled, which don't agree with Boom. at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, no, don't agree with. <laughs> no, I don't at all. agree but with something that. you hear you hear you hear too often that they're and yes. lazy and entitled. Yes. Living in their parents basement. <laughs> can't afford to buy a damn house. You know how hard it is to buy a damn house? Not buying, they should have bought 10 houses by the time they were 30. And then just turn that into passive income. You know, like, yeah, okay, get fucked. Um, Your boomer voice is funny. Yeah. It could be way worse. Um, uh, And the last one is for gamers, especially right now is a moment because this recently just was remade. But Final Fantasy VII is overrated. Um, that, That was like a profound game when it came out and people like have a soft spot if you're a gamer out there and and i made your blood pressure rage just chill i don't i don't believe that but i have heard that argument from some folks they're like eh, it's overrated uh but they recently just did the they're remaking this and releasing it in chunks and people are falling in love with it all over again so i thought i'd just like go fire a flare out there for those folks and be like we're starting to fight (laughs) you know i like it so, uh, yeah, so those those are uh, our version of how to start a fight in five words or less without politics. Uh, well done, Jill. Thank Very you. Well done. Yeah, thank It's uh, Good job to you, man. You took uh, you had some zingers in there. I'm proud of you. I'm glad. I'm glad we set boundaries, letting everyone know that we don't mean any of the things that we're saying. Well, we're just- and I'm glad that you and I know that we wouldn't actually we don't believe these things about each other either because nope. we could just that's why I laugh so hard at what you said is because yeah. it's not that's why like that's what's great about a relationship is like we can say this kind of wild shit to each other because we know we don't mean it because <laughs> yeah. you know that that I would never ever say you just like your mom I'd be like I'd, I'd make sure I'm in a full plate armor whenever I said and that. All so that, that work could, you know, you've done over 20 years helped me holster the guns. It's just poof, out right. the window. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if I said we played this game one year into our relationship, how well this would have gone. You know, like, we probably wouldn't be. What'd you say? We wouldn't you know? be sitting here right now. I don't think. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think that would have worked. Uh, uh, if you have a good way to start a fight in five words or less without using politics, uh, hit us up in the comments. Let us know. We'd love to hear. <laughs> what you think you could start uh in five words or less but be cool all right don't be let's not let's not go to two dark places don't be comparing right? people to their mothers okay <laughs> yeah keep your mother out of it all right yeah all right you <laughs> bunk pieces of shit okay now we're gonna go on to we're gonna wrap this up with uh jill is gonna play the game uh jill you are a bit of an expert when it comes to 
the workplace. I mean, that's what you're known on the the Discord for. By the way, link to our Discord in the description down below. Um, you know, people know you as the HR guru, the HR expert, the HR shoving stuff. <laughs> um, and uh, you've also spent a fair amount of time on LinkedIn. How comfortable are you with spotting a legit LinkedIn poster? And how comfortable are you with identifying a post that's AI? I'm really not comfortable. I've I've listened to some of your clips with you and Justin. I think I'm going to be terrible at this because <laughs> there's a lot okay. of gross people out there promoting themselves on LinkedIn. So they sound like AI because it's all a bunch of grossiness. So yeah. I don't think I'm going to do very good, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> all right. I've got four of them here for you. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to play you the prompt. And then I want you to like take me through it, like your thought process, why it's AI, why it's a real person, and uh, we'll see we'll see whether or not you're right. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Here's the here's the first one. The most crucial advice for interviewers: prioritize active listening over scripted questioning. By truly engaging with candidates, understanding their experiences, and valuing their perspectives, interviewers can uncover valuable insights forge authentic connections, and ultimately select the best fit candidates for their teams. Let's revolutionize the interview process, one meaningful conversation at a time. Hash interview tips, active listening, hiring success. By the way, uh, AI has a hard time. With hashtags. Uh, sometimes <laughs> with, with the voice has a hard time with hashtags. It's like, hi, shy, shy. Hi, shy, shy, shy. Hi, shy, shy. Which is one of the reasons why I love using this particular <laughs> service because it's like, hi, shy, 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 hi, shy, shy, shy. <laughs> All right. All right. So take me through it. Can I declare what I think it is and then take you through it? Yes. All right. Yes. I think it's AI. Okay. Because it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How is it wrong? How is it wrong? I mean, active listening is important. Don't get me wrong. But the advice would tell you that you should have questions and, and it's scripted. It's a tough word to use because scripted sounds like you aren't really listening. You're just asking the questions and you're just trying to get through it. But you do have consistent questions. So you should have a script. So you ask all of your candidates the same thing. If you just kind of shoot from the hip and, you know, all that, you know, getting to know them on a, on a particular level is important. But but you have to have the same questions across all of your candidates. Otherwise you're not really compa com comparing apples to apples. So the advice isn't good. Plus the like revolution bullshit, like that's just gross. I mean, I mean, maybe an influencer said that, but it sounds like AI to me. Okay. All right. Jill. Yeah. Ta -da. <laughs> you're correct. It's AI. <laughs> that was creepy AF. <laughs> Hush, 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 ta -ta. <laughs> um, you are correct. And I, I, I think this is interesting because you were like, well, first of all, how sad would that be if that was a real person yeah. posting incorrect information on LinkedIn, right? You better go check yourself. You are not an expert recruiter. You're wrong. <laughs> better, better go check your pants because that ain't right. All right. Well done. Right. Very good start. Whew. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here's, here's our second one. Every morning I kick off my day with a hardcore workout session. We're talking squats that could rival Hercules, bench presses that make Thor jealous, and enough cardio to power a marathon. Little did I know those sweat-soaked hours at the gym weren't just sculpting my physique, they were sculpting my bank account too. Fast forward to my annual review, and boom, my boss is handing me a fat 10% bonus, all thanks to the gains I've been stacking up. Moral of the story? Pump up those muscles. Pump up that paycheck. It's a win-win, baby. Hashtag, hash, sweat equity. <laughs> hash, workout wins. Chad, muscles mean money. Muscles mean money. That is so gross. I love it. Hash, hash, hash. Hash, 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 hash. I think it's an influencer, and I think it's gross. Hashtag GTO. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the wording sounds like a dude bro who's real proud of his physique and probably filming himself in the gym. Um, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. All right. Jill, Aww. thankfully, that was AI. <laughs> thankfully, that was AI. Oh. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, my prompt for that one was like basically be a gross and untrustworthy LinkedIn influencer and talk about how your gains in the, uh, in the weight room have, uh, landed you a bonus at work. Gross. And, uh, 
it delivered because I mean, that felt pretty gross I and had believable. Someone particularly in mind when I was listening to it, and I don't know if that guy was fit or not, but I know he liked a GTL all day. So yeah, that's <laughs> gross. You can't say that. We're a family podcast. Oh yeah, sure. You're gonna tell me yeah, to yeah. behave on your podcast? That's that's yeah. rich. We, we talk about how babies are born, but we don't talk about <laughs> the process of the making the babies. All right, here we go. Number three. Okay. I'm traveling for work, and instead of eating a fancy dinner out, I've decided to cook a cheaper meal in the hotel room. Even though the hotel room didn't have a kitchen, I managed to use the coffee machine to cook chicken with butter and garlic. Although my company allows me to expense dinner while traveling, I wanted to save money because I know that every dollar counts on the P&L. It's the little things that get you promoted. Hashtag work. Chash head money. Chash chash hotel. Chash coffee. Chash promotion chat career advice <laughs> chat chat it gets me every time it just sounds like <laughs> Same. all of a sudden they're very drunk at the end it's like ah, yeah. chat, chat. Chat, chat, chat. all right all right what do you think about this one? Oh man so you threw me because i just thought the, the guy the last one was such a dude bro grossy gross that it was it was uh an influencer but now you knowing that you use that as a prompt i don't know what to think this sounds like someone trying to give legit advice. Like I could see someone, a real human thinking this is good advice and it just being like, yeah, okay, bro, go make your chicken and garlic in your hotel room. I'm going to go out. Okay. <laughs> like it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to say as a person. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is a real post from a real person who thinks that they're somehow their boss is like, wow, thanks for not going out to eat and saving money. Here's your promotion, because that's not how promotions work no. or shouldn't work. I should say they're like, no. you know, Doug, when he goes on business trips, he doesn't he doesn't spend a lot of the daily allowance. Maybe we ought to give him a chance at leading people. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> what? This person that wrote this sounds like a, I, I just picture it to being a really sad older man who's been like doing the company grind for a long time. Like a, a boomer still believes that he's going to get rewarded at the end of this rainbow. <laughs> it's like, so what did you do? You went to the store and bought chicken breasts and garlic or did you pack it in your suitcase? He probably packed it in his suitcase, which is disgusting. He's like, just go to Taco Bell. Just go, go somewhere cheap, dude. Like you're not saving anybody anything. You're an embarrassment. <laughs> That's what you are. For starters, uh, this was not an older guy. No, he's probably a younger, younger ish. And also, he put a picture of the chicken and the butter in the coffee pot that he attached to his post. And I also, Ew. I'm like, hey, asshole, people don't assume you're cooking chicken in a coffee pot, so they may not wash those coffee pots as well as they should. Yeah. And now you've put raw chicken. I don't assume pot. that That's anybody washed it before me. I'd wash it before I used right. it, and then I would That's wash it. That's a dangerous thing to assume that, like, this is this has been very well washed and disinfected. It's like, no. I no, will no, no, say no. that, like, people who are um, like flight attendants have like some of these hacks and stuff, but mm -hmm. and that makes more sense because they really don't have a lot of time. They might only be somewhere for you know a couple hours, and they got to get yeah. some sleep. But if you're just like out there traveling for work on the grind. <laughs> And you have an allowance and you choose not to use it. Instead, you're going to fucking cook your chicken. Yeah. Like, do you have a thermometer with you too, buddy? Are you sure it's cooked? Not nerdy, but like the IRS per diem is pretty generous. You can do better than that. Come on. Right? You don't on, have to be fancy. You can still go somewhere cheap. <laughs> yeah. Because when you're on your deathbed and you're like, oh, I could have got that promotion if I wouldn't have gone out to Arby's while I was on that trip. <laughs> I'd rather you know? I'd rather travel with like Uncrustables or my own peanut butter and jelly right. than that shit. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. All right. Last one. All right. Here we go. So there I was in the boardroom pitching my idea for a new sustainability initiative to the CEO. At first, they weren't sold. It's too risky they said. But I wasn't about to let that stop me. I doubled down, armed with research on consumer demand for eco-friendly products and the potential for positive PR. After a passionate debate, we found common ground, and my vision became a reality, making our company a leader in sustainability. <laughs> Ladies, 
Never underestimate the power of persistence and belief in your ideas. You have the ability to spark real change. Hash boss babe power. Hash never take. No hash sustainability. Champion. That was gross. <laughs> 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 I also take issue with the the lady voice. Like, why is she all like, you know, like this? Listen, with her. Tone? The first one, the first one that I did was worse. All right, is she had like an uptick in the way she talked? And I was oh, like, God. this one seems. I don't like that. You know? <laughs> so like, yeah. this is how girls talk listen, in the bar. There was a lot. Of, I just listen. There was way more than just two. Okay, this was just the one I, I chose. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, if, if, if this dissuades you, it's on me. I apologize. No, no, I'm trying this, to ignore this that. I'm picking on the AI for that being the woman's voice. Like the guy yeah. just sounded like a you know 55 year old you know guy been doing the same job. It didn't feel right to do the guy's voice for a girl's I agree. post. All right. I'm just saying that guy seemed like you know just been company man for way too long and really believes in it. And guy, it's fucking wrong. The guy's soul is hanging on by a thread. Right, but he still <laughs> pretends like he's just you know the model citizen of the company. He's and, about to follow Jason Bourne across that river Styx. You know. But that guy's not gonna make it. He can't swim that well. <laughs> no, that guy's not gonna that make it because he had coffee. He's got the dad he had coffee out of the coffee. The coffee carafe that had fucking raw chicken in it <laughs> but this voice is just so <laughs> trying to ignore it i'm taking issue with the ai is like this is what a lady sounds like when she's you mm -hmm. know presenting her case and sustainability um mm -hmm. i think it's gross but but a but believable um mm -hmm. you know in terms of it, it's a little lame the argument's kind of lacking a little mm -hmm. bit I don't know if that makes me think it's AI or a person, though. <laughs> Which is it? What does that lean towards? Yeah, there's, there's, it's missing some detail. I feel like it's missing some content. I feel like there's some good detail in there. Uh, I, I'm gonna go person and you know, quote okay. unquote influencer. Okay. All right, Jill. Aww. It's AI. All right. You're right. The details were lacking. <laughs> It took, it took a lot of prompts, a lot of tweaking to get it to be more specific, mm -hmm. uh, to get it to at least say, have some quotes and stuff in there. But yeah, that, that was AI. Yeah. Yeah. 50%. I, I'm all right. Hey, with it. hey what do you want That's from all right. me? I'm hey, all right what do you that. want? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, that was uh, that was good. I think you did a good job. What'd you think? Were they were they solid? They were, were they, solid. Did they need some adjustment. No, right, they were good. good. Like they were they were tricky in a good way. I was uh, having a hard time. You know, I start you nice. start to paint a picture with some of these. I start to think of what this person's like, and that influences me whether I think it's AI or a person. I made these like almost two weeks ago, and uh, listening to them again, I'm like, God, this does sound like a real person. You know, it sounds <laughs> sounds like it could be. Real person, and it makes me sad. I mean, they didn't oh. so gross anymore. It's hard to tell. It's Jack Dasty. Uh, well, that was fun. Thanks for playing. Sure. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Uh, before we head on out, uh, is there anything you'd like to recommend to the wonderful people out there? Um, let's see. I couldn't think of any shows or movies because I haven't really been watching anything in a while. Uh, so I will recommend a book. And I'm going to try to recommend something that maybe your followers might listen to or read. Um, I haven't finished it yet. So spoiler alert, I don't know how um, how much I like if it. If the dog dies. I don't know if the dog dies. There's no dog so far. Hoping it stays that way. But you'll love the title. It's called They Both Die at the End. So. Ah, one of them could be a dog. We don't know. <laughs> it's two people are the main characters. Could be two dogs. It's bad. Are they actual dogs? We don't know. <laughs> but the premise is kind of interesting. So it's kind of it's a bit of a young adult book. Um, but that just means it's typically not super graphic. It doesn't mean that you can't read it if you're not a young adult. Um, There's just like finger play, but no penetration. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. We haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> Um, so, so the premise though is like the government has instituted this group called, um, death cast and they know like when your time's up and they call you the day you're going to die to like, let you know, like today's your last day, go make the most of it, you know? And it follows th these two people that have both been notified that today's the, di the day they're going to die. So that's why it's called They Both Died at the End. It's kind of a spoiler, but um, I assume. Premise. I assume. But yeah, I thought the listeners here might like that 
premise of this death cast. Like, why do they do this? Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? So how would you spend your last day if you knew, like really knew? So I'm hoping to finish that I book like today. It. So check it cool. out. Right on. Uh, I'm going to recommend Dune Part 2. I just saw it over the weekend. Fucking phenomenal movie. It's almost three hours and every minute is excellent. It's really well done. I never read the original source material, so I can't compare it to anything. I barely watched the one from the 80s, and I think I watched some of the miniseries on sci-fi in like 2000, but I didn't remember any of it. But fucking stellar visuals. The acting's top notch. Uh, Great. Just fantastic. Love it. You should go check it out in the theater. It's amazing. So, you know, sandworms. They gonna get you. So, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, Jill, thank you so much for hanging out. This was an absolute delight. You're welcome. And a- as a reminder for everyone, please, uh, if you're listening to us, wherever you're listening, uh, like, uh, rate, review. Uh, and if you're watching, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. And uh, also do us a favor, share us around. Uh, it means a lot if you share it to somebody and they listen and then they listen. And it, it means a lot to us that you can do that. Uh, check the link in the description for links to our Discord, our merch, and our Patreon. And follow us on all our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast. And with that, I want to say, Jill, thank you. You're welcome. And to our listeners and our viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Woo! Mind Gap Podcast.